Thank you for joining us at Youthology Resources. You know, one of the greatest dangers to young leaders is vanity. As a matter of fact, one of the greatest dangers to uh, older leaders is vanity. You might even say the greatest danger to any leader is vanity. I want to talk to you about vanity. Why? Not because I've attained perfect humility or conquered all of my pride. But you know, growing up, that was a major issue for me. And I remember my wife saying to me, uh, you know, the greatest area of growth that I've seen in you is your humility. I guess when somebody knows you really well and they say something like that, it's like an accomplishment, right? Especially for somebody who struggled with pride so much. But I want to talk to you maybe uh, real quick about some biblical um, thoughts on vanity. And then I want to give you 10 signs, 10 signs of vanity and ask you some tough questions. Can we do that? Let me take you to the Old Testament. Do you remember the story of Samuel who was looking for a king for Israel? And Jesse brought out all of his sons and right, hey, it's this one, right? This one's tall or this one's athletic or it's got to be this one because he's handsome, right? And do you remember those words? Samuel said, no, it's none of these. God hasn't chosen any of these. God doesn't look at the outside, the stature. God's looking for the character, right? The, the spiritual, not the physical. And then, wow. Ecclesiastes, Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. In Ecclesiastes 1 and 2, you remember where Solomon said, I put my mind uh, to pursue everything on this earth. I mean, he had pools, he had houses, he had servants, he had cattle, he had land, right? And he says, in the end, all of that chasing after materialism, after stature, after, you know, greatness and uh, applause, it, it, right, in the East, all of that was like grasping after wind. Grasping, at, right, you ever tried to grab wind, right? And he said, in the end, it was vanity. And then he said it again, all was vanity. Powerful words. And then I wanna take you to Jesus' words in Mark chapter eight. Do you remember when Jesus is talking to the disciples and he had just done this incredible miracle, you know, the, the, the feeding uh, of, the, uh, of this mass uh, number of people, right? And as they're talking at the end, uh, Jesus simply says these words, um, listen, it's not about all the, the miracles and all the, the big things in the kingdom and these things that you've seen me do. He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, to get a crowd, followers, right? To gain the whole world, but to lose their soul. Remarkable words when it comes to balancing the spiritual and the natural, right? Um, let me give you a definition. Let me give you a definition for vanity. When you look at the definition for vanity, you see words like conceit, pride, Okay, I love this one, um, overemphasis on appearance. An overemphasis on, that's all taken just from Webster's Dictionary, right? Uh, that, uh, what is vain or empty? Those are all, like four or five different definitions there, just taken from Webster's Dictionary. And when you put that together with those scriptures, you see this, overemphasis on the natural and an un underemphasis on the spiritual, right? Listen, one of the things that, uh, that I remember reading throughout his, uh, Christian history are the capital sins. You know there are like seven cardinal sins. Did you know that? The capital sins. And they were things like, you know, lust and anger and wrath and uh, slothfulness, right? And one of the key ones was pride or vanity. Interestingly enough, the capital sins were the center, okay, or the beginning of all other sins. 
Isn't that interesting that pride, right, comes before a fall? It's like the slippery slope. You ever thought about that? You ever maybe stood on the top of a hill that's covered with snow and maybe ice, a sledding hill, right? And you're standing there on that edge and one bad slip is a catastrophic fall, isn't it? And that's kind of the way that pride and vanity uh, can be dis dis described. You're at the top of this slippery slope, okay? And you think that everything's great and you've got good footing and you're at the, you're, you're at the top of the game, right? You, you're at the pinnacle. And then one slip and down the hill you go, right? It's that slippery slope of balancing pride and the external and right all of that. So let me, let me ask you some tough questions. I want to give you uh, 15, uh, I'm sorry, 10 signs of vanity, okay? 10 signs of vanity. And let me begin by asking you a few questions, okay? I, I want to get really real before I give you these signs. Let me get as practical. So I think you'll see that these signs are spiritual and practical, but these questions, I think they're really practical. So let me, let me give you a few questions. Question number one, do we really need another page in social media like uh, preachers in sneakers? If you've thought about that, now, listen, I know that's fun, right? And we're having a little fun with that, but there's an overemphasis when we talk about those kind of things, right? Uh, externally. Do we really have to say, here's another tough question. Do we really have to call everyone a legend? Yeah, I, I know, right? Maybe you turned me off right there. And you're like, okay, this guy, what's he talking about? We call every, everybody and everyone a legend, don't we? Uh, I don't know about you, I run from it. I, those who know me best know I don't like that. I don't like that term, I don't like that. I think it feeds the flesh. I, I really do. Listen, legends are dead, okay? Legends are dead. Um, let's wait until somebody lays it down and their life is finished and their life is complete before we say things like that, right? As, especially in the kingdom. Uh, here's another one. Do we need another post uh, of our meetings and our services of bands and poses that are filtered perfectly and we're missing the response of people and the altars and brokenness and transformation and stories of healing, right? Rather than the light set per, listen, I, I've been there, right? I, this, this, is, this is all common, right? The, uh, again, dangerous questions, okay? Let me ask you one more dangerous question. When is the last time that you cried for somebody else and not for yourself? Right? I mean, think about that. When is the last time you cried for somebody else and not for yourself? Because a lot of us get more disappointed or uh, more distraught over what happens to ourselves rather than what is happening in somebody else's life. Right? Compassion. Empathy. Right? So with those kind of tough questions aside, let me give you 10 signs of vanity. 10 signs of vanity. Uh, sign number one, coveting. Mm -hmm. Let's just start right there. Uh, listen, the last one is going to be contentment. Number 10 is contentment. And I want you to look at all of the things between coveting and contentment that can take over and, and bring about or cause vanity in our life. So number, number one, coveting. Coveting money, coveting fame, coveting applause, right? Um, think about it. Coveting was one of the Ten Commandments. Do not covet, right? Uh, number two, another sign of vanity. I'm just going to spend maybe, you know, uh, less than a minute on each of these. Excessive or compulsive focus upon self. Listen, obsessive or compulsive focus on self and not others. Number three, comparison of self to others. Now listen, this is really important. Comparison of self to others that you are not in relationship with. I, I 
think we should all have tight circles. We should all be uh, with the people who are closest to us in that inner circle. We should all be talking about how can I do better in this and what do you see in my life? That personal editing, you know, accountability. But it's, it's that comparison of others that are not even in your circle that is dangerous and that moves into vanity. Number four, uh, defensiveness of criticism. Defensiveness of criticism. When somebody gives you criticism or they, they look at you and they edit your life or they say something about you, do we become immediately defensive? I believe that's, that is a part of a sign, one of the, maybe a root of vanity because, you know, we're so disappointed in that moment. Number five, number five, an overemphasis on the external worth and an underemphasis on internal worth. Now think about that. That takes us right back to those scriptures, doesn't it? With um, God choosing a leader and saying, listen, I'm not looking at the outside. I'm not looking at the stature. I'm looking at the character, right? So that's what I mean by an overemphasis of the external worth my value externally, my gifts and my talents versus my value spiritually and my character and what I bring to uh, people's lives, right? Number six, more time in social media and in front of a mirror than your spiritual disciplines. Wow, this is one that I think about often. It's why I've set up specific uh, time, a specific time and a place for me every week to meet with God. I, I don't say, you know, tomorrow if I have time I'll do my spiritual disciplines in the morning. Or, you know, I got a busy day tomorrow so I'm going to do my spiritual disciplines at the end of the day. No, 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 no. I have said it for over 20 years, the same time and the same place and nothing gets in the way of it. And I'm, I'm asking you that simple question. Just look at your phone. Go to your settings, right? Go to your notification. You know, you can set a notification on your phone to alert you when you spend so much time in whatever app, or right? And I want you to ask yourself right now, just go back and look at your phone right now. Did, did, have you spent more than an hour on, you know, a certain app, but you didn't have any time for devotion? Think about that. Very important question. Am I spending more time in my social media or on my phone or in front of the mirror than I do spiritual disciplines? Okay, uh, listen, number, number seven. An elevated excitement or disappointment over applause or criticism. Can I say that again? An elevated excitement or disappointment over applause or criticism. Elevated excitement over applause, elevated disappointment over criticism. Interesting thought. Which one motivates you more, right? Is it the applause or the lack of, or is it the criticism? Is it the editing and the accountability, you know, or the, the lack of in that setting? Number eight, I wanna ask you uh, uh, questions on the, in the area of social media. Okay, so this number eight, it would be inclusive of social media platforms, okay? So let, let me go there. Um, if you have purchased likes and followers, that is a dangerous replacement for influence. Okay, listen, I know there are reasons why maybe some people have done that. And I'm gonna give that to you, right? You want to increase your footprint, you want to increase your sphere of influence. But hear me, if you've gone out and purchased likes and purchased followers, that is a dangerous sign of vanity. Because if you place your value or your worth in numbers on the screen, right? Some of us place our value and our worth because of how many likes we got over a post. I've done this. Come on, man, don't, don't walk out on me right now. I've done this, I've been there. And I've had to crucify that and say, you know what, it's more valuable that I get comments than likes. It's more valuable that I say what I wanna say than then then, then people have read what I had to say, right? So, so think about that. Here's another one. Checking your likes and placing value on people, checking your likes or somebody else's like, and placing a value on somebody's influence because of the number of followers or likes. 
right? We've done that. Maybe one of the first things you do is look at that, right? The, the picture, the video, and you look at the likes or who liked it, or right? Where's, it, it, listen, when the value of someone is dependent upon how many li likes or followers they have, parenthetically remember what we just said, uh, not knowing whether they purchased 10,000 followers or more, right? You ever thought about that? Of course you have. So be careful of placing that importance or that worth on uh, it, the, the influence that someone might have because of values or uh, because of followers or likes, okay? Dangerous sign of vanity. Let me give you one more in this area. Um, competitive with others, hear me, competitive with others in the area of likes or numbers or positions or the social circles they're in in social media. I had a young minister come to me uh, two weeks ago and we had this conversation, it, these exact words. And you know, given in the light of all the things that are, that are going on and the things that are being said about certain ministers and all of that, I just want you to, I want you to go there just for a minute. And I want you to think about that. Are you in competition for self-worth because you're in the wrong circles? Right? Man, I wish I could. I, I wish I was in that discussion. I, I wish that person was my friend. Okay, have, have you been there? Listen, a dangerous sign of vanity to desire to be in circles that are not yours. Create your own circles. Let your value or your worth be the people that you serve, okay? Not the people that somebody else serves or not the servant of those people. Let your worth and your value come to the individual people that you serve, okay? Uh, okay, number nine, frequent depression or poor mental or emotional health. Okay, hear me. Frequent depression or poor mental or emotional health. Why do I say that? Because I believe much of the issues of mental health that we have are caused by external factors. Hear me. I understand chemical imbalance. I understand the biological effect. I understand uh, people who have gone through the grief scale and had many different kinds of things hit them at the same time. I've been there, okay? You, you, some of you know my story. I, I've been there, okay? But hear me, excessive, frequent depression and poor uh, mental and emotional health is a major sign of vanity, okay? Correct that area of your life because you have placed, oftentimes we have placed more stress on ourselves because of the way we think and the way we measure success than, than, than we should. We place way too much stress on ourselves because of that. Okay, let me give you the last one. And that is a lack of, uh, of contentment. So we went from this, uh, the, the first sign being uh, like desiring somebody, everybody else's stuff, coveting uh, positions, titles, materialism, right? We've, we've gone from coveting all the way through to now a lack of contentment. Contentment, simple contentment in life for, for what you do have. Thanksgiving, measurement, assessing in your life the most important things. And the most important things are character, hear me? They are character, not stature, okay? The most important things are spiritual and not physical. So take a look at these, man. I know we handled some uh, di difficult topics, maybe some tough things in there. I wish this were a discussion so we could, you know, go there. But hopefully, I've made you think a little bit. Maybe made you upset a little bit. Maybe, maybe you looked at me and said that's not fair to say. That's okay. I, listen, if we don't raise the temperature in the room with topics like this, have we really even dealt with it? Right. So listen, if you would. Think of those texts, the first Samuel 16, and uh, the, the importance of God not looking at the outward man, right? God looking at the inner man. And man, Solomon, 
Ecclesiastes 1 and 2. Really, you can go into 4 and 5, also chapters 4 and 5. I just read through that whole uh, Ecclesiastes uh, text, you, even into 4 and 5. And look at the value of spiritual things and not gaining uh, physical things or materialism, right? And then finally, Jesus' words. What powerful words. What does it get, what what does it matter? What do you gain if you in your life gain everything else but you lose your soul? You gain all the physical, you gain all right the material, but you lose the spiritual, you lose the soul. Each of us have to really weigh this. So, would you go back over this and look at some of those difficult questions and I, I, I hope and pray that you as a young leader, that you as a, a an older, that you as a leader would abhor vanity, abhor vanity, okay? Hey, have a great week. Hit me up in the comments. Let's let's get this discuss, discussion going. Okay, you know where to find me. Go to social media uh, forward slash Jeff Grinnell. You can go to our YouTube channel and watch this. You can go to uh, the website youthology.com and you can read the manuscript that will be here or you can go to the iTunes podcast and you can listen to this also. Thank you for joining us at Youthology Resources.